Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Could I uh, ask, uh, please, if you will turn off your cell phones because we're recording this and the uh, cell phones sometimes interfere with the recording. My name is Arthur Duffy. I'm the Executive Director of the Waterloo Institute for Nanotechnology. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our seminar speaker, who well, I'll win seminar speaker for today, Dr. Zhu Hong Ni. Uh, Dr. Ni did his PhD at the University of Toronto on polymer and materials chemistry in the laboratory of uh, Dr. Eugenia Kumache Kumacheva, who incidentally is a member of our International Scientific Advisory Board. He's currently an NSA postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University with Professor George Whitesides uh, in the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology. Uh, I think most of you here will know that Whitesides is clearly one of the world's most recognized chemists with interests spanning biochemistry, material science, physical organic chemistry, and uh, nanotechnology. Dr. Nees told me that it's a group of over 40 people. Dr. Nees' interests are, are uh, also uh, cross-disciplinary and they include synthesis, fabrication, self-assembly of functional nanostructures, the use of micro and nanofluidics for, self for uh, making new materials, the development of novel tools and materials for biological applications such as uh, cell manipulation and regulation in medical diagnosis, uh, biomimetic nanocomposites with structural hierarchy <coughs> and computational modeling of self-assembling nanoparticles. Uh, Dr. Nee has many awards to his credit. He was one of the, the four top-ranked top ranked, uh, nominees for the NSERC uh, Doctoral Prize in 2009. Uh, the same year, he won the Canadian Association for Graduate Studies Dissertation Award. He was the winner of the Canadian Institute of Chemistry, Macromolecular Science and Engineering Division, Lances uh, Graduate Thesis Award in 2008 and he held uh, a number of scholarships, the Gavette Scholarship, the Corbin Hanneman Bailey Fellowship, and the U of T Fellowship uh, at the University of Toronto during his PhD studies. And he was also awarded the Canada Research Chair Graduate Prize in Nanotechnology, all as a graduate student. He has published uh, to date 26 papers in top refereed journals, and uh, with a Hirsch Index of 13 and 750 citations, his research is clearly having an impact. So today, the title of his lecture is Developing New Strategies for the Preparation of Nano and Microstructure Polymer Materials. Please welcome Dr. Nee. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, Dr. Caddy's uh, invitation and the introduction. It's my great pleasure to be here. Today, I'm going to uh, share with you my work on the uh, preparation of nano and microstructured polymer materials. And today, I mainly focus on my PhD research since currently, mostly I'm working on uh, materials on a larger, on much larger scale. But I will give a brief introduction of my current projects in uh, Whiteside's lab. Despite incredible improvement in public health care in the pub in the past half century, there are still a number of big issues. For example, millions of people lack access to very basic uh, health care and die from preventable disease. This led to my first uh, one of my projects called Zero Cost Diagnostics. Our goal is to develop low cost materials and devices specifically for developing countries. And since the first world diagnostic technologies are not necessarily useful in uh, developing countries, uh, simply because the poor cannot afford it. And under this big umbrella, I'm currently working on uh, medical diagnostic two uh, platforms. One is paper-based microfluidic diagnostics and the magnetic levitations. For example, we perform calorimetric electrochemical and uh, electrochemical luminescence sensing on microfluidic device made from a piece of paper. We use uh, capillary weakening of paper materials to uh, separate interference species on paper and uh, to deliver different reagents to uh, detection zone to uh, perform uh, the detection of disease biomarker. We also use magnetic levitation to detect uh, disease biomarker. This detection relies on the uh, levitation height change upon the selective binding of uh, biomolecules on, onto uh, micropores bees. And recently, this paper published and highlighted by a chemical technology. 
we know that uh, three-dimensional cell culture is critical for tissue-based biopsy and uh, regenerative medicines. We are interested in uh, developing new tools for the manipulation of cells in three-dimensional cell culture. For example, we developed a stream-based cell culture system. We culture cells on a hydrogen permitted uh, stream. And uh, the cells are uh, happily growing in uh, the hydrogen permitted stream as indicated in this plot. As shown in this plot, the number of cells uh, increase with uh, time and level up to a certain uh, time. And because of the mechanical for, um, properties offered by a stream, so this allows us to easily manipulate cells in a three-dimensional cell culture. We are currently working on the integration of stream with uh, microfluidic technology to study the chemotaxis of cells and the integration of a stream with existing three-dimensional cell culture platform and also to look at uh, the insertion of uh, streams into uh, tissues to study the uh, response of uh, tissue to uh, different kinds of cells, for, exa for example, uh, cancer cells. So next, I'll focus uh, on my uh, today's talk, the preparation of nano and micron structured uh, polymer materials. Uh, Tentatively, we can summarize existing uh, technologies for the uh, preparation of materials uh, into two categories, top-down and uh, bottom-up approaches. Bottom-up approaches uh, re relies on the uh, natural forces to organize atoms, uh, molecules, nanoparticles, and microparticles to uh, order the structures. Currently, we develop a nano uh, block polymer approach to the self-assembly of uh, inorganic nanocrystals. In contrast, the top-down approach uh, relies on discrediting uh, large objects into small pieces by using technologies such as scaffolding, lithography, machining, etching, and so on. Recently, we developed a microfluidic uh, top-down approach for the preparation of uh, polymer particles and uh, capsules. So this comes to the outline of my uh, today's talk. First, I will introduce self-assembly of uh, inorganic, uh, polymer inorganic nanoparticles. I will introduce the organization of one-dimensional metal polymer nanoparticles. And then I will talk about the characteristics of the self-assembly and the quantification of the self-assembly process and the property of the uh, self-assembly structures. Then I will go on to uh, talk about uh, microfluidic synthesis of polymer particles and capsules. I will introduce why we use microfluidic reactors and how we can use this technique to uh, control the size, shape, composition, and morphology of polymer particles. And I will uh, quickly mention uh, Pickering emulsions. So let me uh, start from the uh, first part, self-assembly of polymer inorganic uh, nanoparticles. Recently, the great progress has been achieved in the synthesis of polymer, uh, inorganic uh, nanoparticles with uh, controlled size, shape, and uh, composition. These are some uh, representative images of uh, anisotropic nanoparticles, such as uh, colloidal clusters, fast polyhydra, rods, and ellipsoids. In particular, metal uh, nanorods, semiconductor nanorods, and carbon nanotubes have already shown many interesting optical, electronic, or uh, magnetic uh, properties. And uh, this uh, progress led to the shifting in nanotechnology from making these nano objects to uh, organize these uh, objects into hierarchical structures, functional materials. So why we uh, want to assemble nanoparticles? First, it's very straightforward. If we put uh, multi-types of nanoparticles together, we we'll achieve uh, self-assembled nanomaterials with properties of all individuals. For example, uh, quantum uh, dots for imaging, and magnetic nanoparticles for manipulation and uh, imaging, and magnetic, uh, meta metallic nanoparticles for uh, triggering reactions or controlled release. These uh, self-assembled structures have applications such as in uh, medical diagnostics, uh, targeted delivery, controlled release, and so on. More importantly, the self-assembled of nanoparticles can give uh, rise to uh, self-assembled structures, new synergetic properties due to the coupling of uh, optic, electronic, or magnetic properties between these nanoparticles, uh, such as uh, Metal uh, nanoparticles uh, between uh, metal nanoparticles, carbon and plasmonics, 
coupling of excitons, plasma exciton interactions, and magnetic interactions. For example, if you bring uh, metal nanoparticles flow to a semiconductor nanoparticles, because of the, due to the uh, plasmonic exciton interactions, the uh, the photoluminescence of the uh, semiconductor nanoparticles will be uh, dramatically suppressed or amplified. These uh, covered properties have applications in uh, sensing nanoelectronics, optoelectronics, and uh, metal uh, materials, and uh, uh, data storage and uh, catalytic uh, reactions. Recently, uh, some uh, uh, approach has been developed for the self-assembly of uh, anisotropic nanoparticles, such as uh, self-assembly by uh, biorecognition, uh, templating by using uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, uh, DNA, and uh, block of polymers, and by using chemical physical bonding between uh, different kinds of ligands, and by using um, external fields, such as electric field and magnetic field, and all also by using creating uh, nanoparticle amplifiers. However, all these methods can create only limited uh, self-assembled structures or lack control over the uh, self-assembled structure. So it is well known that block of polymer can self-assemble into a wide range of beautiful structures by using uh, thermodynamic or kinetic uh, approaches. For example, by controlling the ratio of uh, uh, different blocks, uh, uh, block of polymer can self-assemble into uh, different structures such as uh, vesicles, nanowires, and nanospheres. More complex structures, such as nanotubes and nanoribbons, can be obtained by controlling the properties of uh, each block or by controlling the quality of solvent for uh, constituent blocks. If we take a close, take a close look at the uh, inorganic nanorods, we can see that the dimension of uh, inorganic nanorods is close to uh, that, of block, uh, that of polymers. If we can selectively attach polymers onto the nanorods, we can control the properties of the uh, polymer uh, teasered uh, nanorods. For example, we can make them amphiphilic. So the question is, can we use existing uh, strategies for the self-assembly of block of polymers to organize inorganic nanorods? To test the hypothesis, we choose uh, golden nanorods as a model system, we selectively attach hydrophobic polystyrene at both ends of uh, golden nanorods. The polymer teaser the nanorods resembles so-called uh, ABA pump on triblock polymer in which a central block is linked by multiple side blocks. Therefore, we expect by controlling the quality of solvent, we should be able to uh, assemble the uh, nanorods into different uh, structures. For example, if we choose uh, dimethylformide, uh, as a solvent, which is good for both metal blocks and uh, polymer blocks. And the addition of water into the system will make the uh, solvents uh, better for polymer blocks, but better for uh, metal blocks. Therefore, we expect nanorods will associate in end-to-end -end mode to form nanochains or nanorings. Also, if we took, take another solvent, tetrahydrofolum, which is good solvent for polymer blocks, but better for metal blocks, the addition of water into the system will make the uh, solvents uh, better for uh, polystyrene polymer blocks, but become better for uh, metal blocks. Therefore, we expect the nanorods will associate in side-by-side -side mode to form uh, bundles or vesicle-like structures. Indeed, we proved our hypothesis in experiments. For example, in water DMF mixture, we obtained uh, nanochains and uh, na at low water concentration, the nanochains enclosed to form uh, rings. In water THF mixture, the nanorods assembled in side-by-side -side mode to form uh, bundles. At a high water concentration, the solvent become much better for the side blocks. Therefore, the side of the nanorods try to expose to the surrounding uh, medium and form these kind of vesicle-like uh, structures with the side of the nanorods uh, face to the sur uh, surrounding medium. In uh, tertiary mixture uh, solvent, we obtained uh, uh, both side-by-side -side and end-to-end -end assembly of nanorods to form a bundled uh, uh, nanochain structures. We did a systematic study of the self-assembled structures by imaging uh, assembled uh, nanochains, for example. And uh, these are the TM images uh, obtained at different uh, time. You can see that with increase of time, the uh, length of the nanochains increase. We currently have developed a polymerization theory to uh, quantitatively predict the self-assembled structures. 
And by using uh, these uh, so-called uh, external catalyst step growth polymerization theory, we can uh, predict the uh, polymerization rate of the uh, nanochain and the uh, degree of polymerization of the nanochain and the cyclization and isomerization and the bound angle of these uh, nanochain structures. As shown in this uh, plot, the uh, degree of polymerization uh, increased, almost linearly increased with time for a different concentration of nanorods. And also the uh, growth rate of the nanochain uh, is uh, linearly increased with uh, the co initial concentration of nanorods in the uh, solution me uh, in the medium. And this uh, all follows the kinetics of polymerization theory. And recently, uh, as far as I know, this is the first uh, a systematic uh, theory for the self-assembly of nano, uh, inorganic nanoparticles. Recently, this uh, draft is uh, ready for submission. Next, I will introduce the characteristics of the self-assembly. Let's first take a close look at the self-assembly structures. As shown in these SEM images, as we can clearly see distinguished uh, polymer phase and uh, uh, metal uh, phase. And this tells us the uh, net polymer chain uh, was polymer chain was selective attached to the end of the uh, nano rods. We also did plenty of experiments to uh, confirm the self-assembly occurred in the uh, solution system. For example, we first studied the uh, substrate effect on the self-assembled structures. We prepare uh, self-assembled structures on different substrates, such as uh, silicon wafer, micro TM grid, and a gold surface. And we didn't see uh, obvious difference between these self-assembled structures. Also, we studied the humidity effect on uh, assembled structure. We found that humidity has no effect on the self-assembled structures. These uh, experiments tell us the self-assembly uh, occurred in the solution system, not from a uh, drying effect or these. Uh, we, furthermore, we studied the uh, self-assembly in the solution system by using uh, UVV's spectrometry and dynamic light scattering. For example, uh, after the addition of water into uh, nanorods in DMF mixture, the nanorod uh, start uh, self-assembly immediately, and this leads to the uh, red shift of longitudinal plasma band of the self-assembly self structures. And after about four hours, the uh, a red shift uh, reached uh, maxima. And after the addition of water in uh, nanorods in THF mixture, the, from this uh, dynamic light scattering experiment, you can see that the hydrodynamic diameter of the uh, aggregates increased from about 100 nanometer to uh, 210 nanometer. Although this uh, uh, hydrodynamic diameter doesn't reflect the real size of the aggregates, but can give us some insight on the self-assembly of nanorods in a solution system. We calculated the number of polystyrene uh, attached the, at the end of nanorods by using this uh, equation. Here, uh, VPS is the volume of polystyrene located uh, in between a pair of nanorods by analyzing the image of uh, SEM imaging. Uh, and the row is the density of polymer globules, and the N uh, here is algorithmic numbers. So as shown in this uh, table, we, we can see that with increase of the length of po polystyrene, the number of polymer chain attached to the end of nanorods uh, decrease. So that's the density of uh, polymer chain at the end of uh, nanorods. We also calculated the uh, average on portable end, the ratio of average on portable end to end distance to uh, average distance between uh, two uh, teasered uh, polystyrene chain. And this highlighted uh, uh, number shows that the polymer chain actually on the stretched state. So that means that from uh, polymer brush uh, uh, structures at the end of nanorods, with the tails of nan uh, polystyrene chain extended to the side of the uh, nanorods. And keep in mind, this is very important for some of our uh, observed structures. We control the end-to-end -end distance of uh, nanorods along a nanochain by either controlling the uh, water content in the mixture or the molecular weight of polystyrene teased onto the nanorods. As shown in this plot, the end-to-end -end distance increased with the increase of polymer lengths attached to the polymer, uh, attached to the uh, nanorods. This is due to the increased volume of polystyrene located in between a pair of nanorods. Moreover, with increase of water content, the end-to-end -end distance increase uh, this is due to the uh, relocation of the tails of uh, polystyrene chain 
from the side of the nanorods to uh, the end of the nanorods. And the distance can be assumed uh, from uh, precisely from uh, 6 nanometer to about uh, 25 nanometer. This is really uh, excellent control over the uh, at nanometer scale. We observed the formation of large fraction of rings in the system at a uh, water DMF mixture. These are the uh, TM image and SEM images. And uh, the diameter of rings is about uh, 300 nanometer, 390 nanometer. We interpret the formation of rings in terms of, in terms of uh, the flexibility of nanochain, which is characterized by the ratio of uh, contour lens to a position lens. We plotted the contour lens and the position lens as a function of water content. We can see that they are optically related. And this tells us that the flexibility of nanochains increased with increase of water content in the mixture. And the yields, this plot shows the yields of rings as a function of water content. You can see at low water concentration, the formation of rings was suppressed. This is due to the high energy cost for bending a rigid nano, nano chain. And at high water concentration, the formation of rings increase, decreased with increase of water content. This is due to the high entropy cost for enclosing a long flexible nano chain. By using a worm-like uh, chain model, we did a theoretical calculation of the probability of the formation of rings in the system and generate this equation. So let's ignore these, all these details. And this equation represents uh, three uh, variations of energy related to the self-assembly, related to the formation of rings. There are uh, bending free energy caused for a uh, bent a rigid uh, nano chain and a surface free energy gain by in, uh, associated two uh, polymer uh, phase, polymer phases uh, to form a single uh, polymer domain. And the conformation energy caused by uh, enclosed the two ends of the uh, nano chain. And for stiff chain, the first two terms are dominated, while for a flexible chain, the last two terms are uh, dominated. And these uh, calculations give us a good explanation of the formation of uh, rings in the system and also can give us a reasonable predi prediction of the probability of the formation of rings. And this is the uh, theoretical calculation of the yields of rings as uh, the ratio of uh, control lens to a position lens. We can see that the follow a similar trend as our experimental data. We found that the aggregates increased with uh, uh, water concentration in the water TM THF mixture. And we characterized the uh, uh, self-assembled structures by using AFM uh, imaging. And uh, we found that for nanospheres ob obtained high water concentration, the thickness of the uh, nanospheres is about uh, uh, 30 nanometer, which is uh, twice uh, of the thickness of the nano chain. This tells us the walls of the uh, spheres are composed of a single layer of nano rods, so that the nano rods actually uh, aligned uh, on the surface side by side with the side of nano rods face the solution system to form a waste-like uh, structure. We know that the solvent quality and the length of blocks are two major factors affect the self-assembly of block of polymers. So next, I will introduce how these two factors affect the self-assembly of uh, inorganic nanorods. So we first studied the evolution of self-assembly structures in a tertiary mixture and generated this uh, face-like diagram. As you in this uh, diagram, and this axis is the uh, water concentration, and this axis is uh, DMF concentration. And this axis is THF concentration. So uh, in different regions of the uh, self-assembled condition, we obtain the different uh, self-assembled structures. For example, at a low THF concentration, in this region, we obtain the nano chain and the nano rings. Especially along this line, we obtain a nano chains with a single nano rods assembled uh, along the nano chain. And in uh, Middle uh, THF concentration, we obtained uh, the nanorods associated in both end-to-end uh, -end and side-by-side -side assembly to form bundled chains and uh, rough-like structures. At a high THF concentration, we obtained uh, bundles and uh, wedge-like uh, structures. At a high certain range of the high water concentration, we obtained network-like uh, structures. This is due to the, uh, the large distance between the nanorods. Therefore, uh, uh, nanorods tend to uh, form branched structures. 
similar to the self-assembly of block of polymers, we uh, observed the profound, uh, profound effect of uh, polymer lens on the self-assembly. For example, at low uh, polymer lens, the uh, energy gain by associating to uh, polymer faces is not enough to trigger the self-assembly. Therefore, the nanorods dispersed as single nanorods in the uh, solvent. When we further increase the length of polymers, the nanorods start assembly to form uh, nanochains and rings. When we further increase the length of polymers, then the polymers is long enough to reach uh, another nanorods from the side of the nanorods to form both uh, side by side and end-to-end uh, -end as assembly to form uh, bundled chains. As you in this uh, SEM image, you can see that there are several nanorods bound together and a three and two. And the self-assembly can be also controlled by controlling the uh, water content in the mixture as shown in this schematic. With, for uh, nanorods teased with long polymer chain with increased water content, the association mode underwent side-by-side uh, -side assembly to both end-to-end -end and side-by-side -side assembly and eventually to uh, single end-to-end -end association to form bundles, bundled chain and uh, single uh, nanochains with single nanorods along the nanochain. We summarize all experimental data in a face-like diagram as shown in this uh, water content and molecular weight space. In different regions, we can uh, obtain different uh, self-assembled structures. This can give us a guidance for the selection of uh, experimental condition for, uh, to generate uh, self-assembled structures for different applications. We control the uh, optical properties of self-assembled structures by either controlling the uh, association mode of the nanorods or by controlling the end-to-end -end distance of nanorods along a nanochain. For example, as shown here in this uh, plot, when the nanorods associate in side-by-side uh, -side mode, this led to, led to the uh, blue shift of the longitudinal plasma band. And end-to-end -end, uh, association causes the uh, red shift of the longitudinal plasma band. And as shown in this plot, with the increase of the distance between the nanorods, the longitudinal plasma, plasma band are blue shifted. And this can be precisely uh, controlled. And we did a theoretical calculation of the uh, plasmonic coupling of self-assembled nanorods in the assembled structures. As shown in this uh, plot, uh, y-axis is the uh, plasmonic uh, frequency, uh, the ratio between uh, assembled structures and uh, individual nanorods. As shown in this uh, curve, these empty uh, symbols are the uh, experimental data. As shown in this plot, we can see that the experimental data follow a similar trend as the theoretical modeling, and the same for the bundles uh, structures. Although there's some uh, there's slightly uh, difference between these uh, experimental data and the theoretical calculation, mostly this is because the uh, dielectric uh, constant difference between a polymer phases and uh, solvent medium. And as shown in this uh, uh, research, we can see that this is a uh, worst type method for the self-assembly of inorganic uh, materials. For example, uh, currently we are also working on uh, the combination of different kinds of polymers and also uh, inorganic nanorods. For example, conducting polymers, uh, uh, external responsive uh, polymers, and also different kinds of nanorods, such as uh, semiconducting <coughs> nanorods and also uh, magnetic nanorods. So next, I will uh, briefly introduce a microfluidic synthesis of uh, polymer particles. In the past uh, about 10 years, we have already witnessed the uh, rapid growing in the field of uh, microfluidics. Microfluidics has been applied in almost every field. For example, uh, optics, uh, health, public health care for uh, disease diagnostics and the blood test, and for uh, cell culturing and cell sorting. Uh, microfluidic reactors, uh, for example, for DNA amplification and also for organic synthesis. And my interest is in uh, microfluidic reactors. Compared to conventional approach for the batch-like uh, synthesis of materials, microfluidic approach have, uh, have many uh, advantages, such as efficient heat and mass transportation, and continuous reaction and online detection. So everything can be automatically controlled by a computer system and can integration and high parking density, so you can integrate, integrate uh, thousands of uh, microfluidic device on a single uh, small chip. 
and also can be used to handle toxic and hazardous chemicals. Recently, we developed a continuous microfluidic approach for the continuous uh, synthesis of polymer particles and capsules with controlled uh, shape, size, shape, composition, and morphology. These are some representative images of uh, polymer particles and capsules prepared in uh, microfluidic reactors, such as ellipsoid rods, disks, and uh, composite polymer particles, and uh, uh, cultural particle ca particles, capsules, and Janus particles. So next, I'll give uh, some details of this uh, approach. This slide shows the setup of the microfluidic reactors. The microfluidic synthesis of polymer particles relies on the continuous generation of uh, simple or compound uh, monomer pre-polymer droplets and uh, subsequent polymerization, photomerization, thermodulation, or ionic cross-linking of these droplets to uh, produce uh, polymer particles and capsules. So as you in this schematic, we uh, introduce uh, liquids by using syringe pump or use uh, gas uh, pressure. And uh, the uh, generation of droplets was monitored by using a uh, microscope uh, connected to a uh, computer. And the particles were continuously produced from the microfluidic uh, device. And this is the optical images of uh, particles continuously uh, come out from a uh, 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 microfluidic device. And these are uh, collected uh, polymer particles. And this, is, this schematic shows the uh, generation of uh, dro uh, monomer droplets from a flow focus in a uh, microfluidic uh, device. As shown in this uh, schematic, the monomer uh, mixed with initiator wa was introduced from a central channel. And uh, liquid uh, 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 surfactant uh, solution uh, were introduced from two side channels. On the shear force of continuous phase, the liquid, uh, monomer liquid thread elongated and broke up into highly more dispersed uh, droplets. And the droplet size of the uh, monomer mon 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 droplet size can be precisely controlled from uh, several micrometer to hundreds of mi micrometer by simply control the uh, flow rate ratio of each phase and also the properties of the liquids. And the productivity of uh, droplets is about six milliliter per uh, hour from so from a single channel, keep in mind that we can integrate high density of uh, channels on a single uh, microfluidic device. And the uh, uh, coefficient of variation of the droplets is normally lower than uh, 2%, which is perfect for applications which requires uh, highly more dispersed uh, polymer uh, particles or droplets. And mostly these particles are very expensive and it costs uh, several hundred, like almost three or four hundred dollars per uh, gram. So it's very expensive. This approach is uh, applicable to a wide range of uh, liquids with uh, uh, microscopic uh, properties. For example, for uh, monomer with viscosity from, uh, we can emulsify liquids from viscos with viscosity from uh, 1 centipers to uh, 1,500 centipers, which covers almost the whole range of monomer uh, liquids. We use the confinement of microfluidic channel and the shear force of uh, continuous phase imposed on the droplets to control the uh, shape of polymer particles. For example, when the uh, undeformed diameter of uh, droplets is smaller than the height and the width of the polymer, ch uh, the microfluidic channel, we obtained uh, uh, spheric polymer particles, highly multi-dispersed uh, polymer particles. At a high uh, shear at high flow rate, the shear force of continuous phase imposed on the droplets deform the droplets, and the polymerization of these droplets generates uh, ellipsoid uh, polymer particles. When the droplets was well confined by the uh, microfluidic channel, we generated uh, discs and the rods. And this microfluidic generation of polymer particles is not only limited to a poly uh, acry acrylic-based uh, monomers. It can be applied to a wide range of monomers, such as uh, uh, polymer hydrogel and uh, even uh, metal alloys. For example, we prepared uh, agro sticks and uh, uh, bismuth alloy ellipsoids from this uh, device. By simply mixing, pre mixing, or post mixing uh, monomer with additives, we produced polymer particles with controlled composition 
For example, uh, we prepared uh, polymer particles with, loaded with uh, dye, organic dye, uh, quantum dots, magnetic nanoparticles, and liquid crystals. The microfluidic generation of polymer particles allows us to uh, control the, uh, uh, the, 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 the distribution of uh, materials inside these uh, polymer particles. For example, by controlling the polymerization rate of the, uh, of the monomers in the microfluid device, we can control the phase separation of liquid crystals with uh, polymers. For example, at a slow polymerization rate, the liquid crystals segregate into the center of the uh, polymer particles to generate to on a uh, polarized microscope, we see these uh, medical uh, structures. And at high polymerization rate, the liquid crystal uniformly distribute in the uh, polymer particles. And these particles have some obligations, for example, a uh, display uh, uh, obligation. By mixing uh, monomer with polygons, we produce po nano or micro porous polymer particles with precisely controlled uh, pore size. By controlling the uh, recipe of polygons or the polymerization phase separation, uh, phase separation rate of polymers with uh, polygons, we control the uh, uh, pore size from uh, several nanometer to uh, tens of uh, micrometer. We also can uh, generate uh, copolymer particles. Other than control the size, shape, composition, and uh, of the polymer particles, this approach allows us to control the morphology of uh, polymer particles. By using this approach, we produce the cultural particles, uh, capsules, and Janus particles. For example, as shown in this schematic, uh, when we uh, introduce uh, uh, monomers, uh, oil, and uh, uh, aqueous solutions side by side from uh, the microfluidic channel, and the liquid. Uh, monomer and uh, uh, silicon oil form a liquid jet with a uh, monomer thread surrounded by a silicon oil and the center is monomer thread and the side is uh, center is silicon oil and side is monomer and this image sh shows the continuous generation uh, of uh, cultural droplets from the microfluidic device and the continuous flowing of cultural droplets in the microfluidic uh, device so we can produce a wide range of uh, uh, cultural droplets for example Cultural droplets with silicon oil inside and aqueous core and monomer inside. We can uh, control the uh, composition of each uh, phase, each phase very easily. More importantly, this approach allows us to uh, easily control the number of cores per shell by simply controlling the uh, flow rate ratio of each phase. By controlling the uh, flow rate ratio, we control the interface, the ratio of interface capillary wavelengths of. Uh, oil phase to a monomer phase. For example, when this ratio increases from 1 to uh, n, so the number of cores also uh, step by step increase from 1 to 3 and more. And this microfluidic approach uh, is uh, predictable. We can precisely control the size of the, of the uh, overall cultural uh, uh, droplets and the thickness of shells and the core size. And we did a theoretical calculation by using continuity equation. Uh, we calculated the damage of liquid jet and overall damage of the uh, cultural droplets. We can see that the, uh, the theoretical calculation fits quite well with our experimental data, as shown in these uh, two plots. And here is the damage of liquid jet in decreased with increase of water, con water flow rate. And this is the uh, overall diameter of droplets uh, decreased with uh, increase of uh, water flow rate. We summarize the uh, generation of uh, droplets from this device by in this uh, phase uh, diagram. And here, each uh, axis is each axis is the uh, uh, flow rate of uh, each uh, uh, liquid. liquid. As shown in this uh, plot, we can see that in different hydrodynamic regions, we can uh, obtain different uh, droplets with different morphologies. And by using a fast photomerization, we can uh, chop the morphology of these droplets, no matter these droplets are under a uh, thermodynamic equilibrium or non-equilibrium state. For example, these uh, droplets are under on, on, uh, non-equilibrium state. So uh, after a certain time, they will relax to uh, some dynamic equilibrium state. So by using this approach, we can chop the morphology of uh, droplets. So we generate particles with different shapes and the cultural droplet particles with a controlled number of cores. 
So we also can use uh, diffusion control duration approach to prepare these uh, cautious uh, uh, microcapsules. For example, we uh, generate alternate droplets in uh, micro 4 device in, uh, as in uh, oil mixed with calcium ions. When the droplets continuous flow in the micro 4 uh, device, the calcium ion diffuse into the droplets to cross-link this biopolymer to generate uh, cautious uh, particles with precisely controlled uh, thickness of uh, cautious particles. For example, with uh, Increase of the concentration with increased concentration of calcium ions, the uh, we obtained uh, droplets, capsules, cultural particles, and eventually uh, obtained uh, completely cross-linked upon uh, biopolymer capsules particles. And these are the SC, uh, microscope images of microscope image of these uh, cultural uh, uh, particles. And this uh, culture uh, particle can be used uh, for the encapsulation of cells. For example, we demonstrate that we can encapsulate a uh, human embryonic stem cell in these capsules. And we also can control the number and the uh, population of uh, different kind, types of uh, cells in the capsules and to look at the uh, cell communication between uh, different kinds of cells. We also can control, uh, produce Yanos particles with precisely controlled uh, uh, compartment of uh, each phase or the surface uh, functionality on uh, each phase. By uh, simply modifying this device, we uh, introduce uh, two uh, miscible or immiscible uh, monomer liquid side by side from two central channel. Because of the uh, low Reynolds number in microfluid device, the two uh, monomer phases from laminar flow, the uh, mixing between two phases are very limited. So. We generate. We can generate uh, yanos like uh, droplets with very sharp interface between uh, two phases, and we can simply introduce different load different materials in each phase. For example, as shown in this image, we load the magnetic nanoparticle in uh, one phase. We also can introduce carbon block or different materials into uh, these yanos particles, and these particles have application. For example, for uh, uh, E-ink uh, e for uh, e-book, so some of them may be familiar with these. Uh, two uh, important features of this uh, approach. First, it allows us to easily manipulate uh, and control the uh, volume of each compartment by simply controlling the flow rate of each phase. For example, by controlling the flow rate, we can uh, control the uh, phase from a Yanus uh, type structure and uh, uh, asymmetric uh, Yanus particles and the three phasic Yanus particles. And uh, here, I would like to mention that uh, because of this, uh, the fast polymerization, we can chop the morphology. Use other approach, these uh, par uh, two phases will separate very quickly. And this uh, particle can have application, for example, for uh, uh, drug delivery. You can load different kinds of drugs or control the uh, materials of each portion to uh, control the decomposition rate. Therefore, you can control the uh, delivery rate of different kinds of drugs. And we also can simply uh, functionalize each phase surface uh, of the uh, Yanus particles. For example, uh, we can introduce uh, uh, biomolecules bi -molecule selected onto each half of the uh, Yanus particles. These can have some uh, uh, applications in uh, biomolecule uh, the, the, uh, to study the uh, cell, uh, uh, cell interaction between uh, biomolecules and uh, cells. And here we also simply demonstrate one uh, application. You can we can make uh, amphibic Yanus particles, and uh, by controlling the, uh, each, the fraction of each phase, we can control the aggregation of these uh, Yanus particles. So for, for example, with increase of the uh, hydrophobic phase in this uh, water solution, these, uh, these uh, cluster size increase. And another, uh, we know that micro, uh, carbon dioxide has uh, impact, have an uh, uh, effect on the global warming and ocean acidification. And I'm interested in using microfluidics. Microfluidics provide a very nice approach for, uh, to uh, model and study the circulation of carbon dioxide in nature. For example, a uh, solubility pump in nature. And also to use carbon dioxide to uh, make materials. And this slide shows one example that we use the dissolution of carbon dioxide to make uh, materials. So as shown in this uh, schematic, we generate a carbon dioxide bubble in a dispersion of polymer particles functionalized with a carboxy group. When the bubble continues flow in the channel due to the uh, 
a dissolution of carbon dioxide, the, uh, the dissolution of carbon dioxide dramatically uh, decreased the pH in the uh, infin vicinity of the uh, uh, bubble. Therefore, uh, increased the hydrophobicity of these uh, polymer particles. Therefore, drove the, uh, uh, drove the particles from uh, uh, surrounding medium onto the surface of gas and liquid interface. While in the rest of the uh, continuous phase, the fast mixing in microfluidics equalized the pH, therefore stabilized these uh, polymer particles, prevent the clogging of the uh, microfluidic channel. This, is, uh, this uh, approach d distinguished from uh, traditional uh, approaches. And two important features of this approach, first, it allows, it's applicable to a wide range of materials, for example, it can be used for uh, polymer particles and inorganic nanoparticles, such as uh, silver nanometer quantum dots and magnetic nanoparticles. And these uh, nanoparticle encapsulate uh, uh, bubbles can be used for uh, uh, drug delivery or uh, uh, magnetic uh, resonance imaging. And also, this approach allows us to produce very small, uh, tiny bubbles by sacrificing some of these uh, carbon dioxide gas. These small bubbles can be used for medical diagnostics, for example, uh, for ultrasound imaging. And we uh, generate, uh, uh, develop a theory and, uh, uh, to predict the uh, contradict, uh, contradict, uh, process of the dissolution of carbon dioxide and uh, jamming of uh, polymer particles under the surface of the uh, uh, carbon dioxide bubble. Conventional approach for the preparation of uh, picking emulsions uh, produce very broad size distribution of uh, yeah, uh, picking emulsions, and also it always generates picking emulsions with large amount of free particles in the surrounding medium. This limited the uh, the high standard application of these uh, picking emulsions. For example, for some optic applications. By using this uh, microfluidic approach, we can generate uh, highly multispersed precon emulsions with well-controlled surface coverage of these uh, uh, droplets. And this uh, well-controlled uh, coverage of these uh, droplets allows us to explore the physics underlying the uh, uh, underlying these uh, the underlying physics of these uh, picking emulsions, and also can have some uh, new applications. Uh, collaborate with uh, Stefan Bond in England. We uh, f look at the buckling of these uh, picking emulsions recently. So here I'll give a brief summary. So first uh, we uh, introduced a block of polymer paradigm for the self-assembly. And this approach can be applied to uh, different combinations of polymers and inorganic nanorods. And the control over these uh, optical properties can be easily controlled by controlling the self-assembly. We believe that it can be extended to control over electronic and magnetic uh, properties. Actually, currently we are working on this. And we also introduce a versatile microfluidic approach for the synthesis of polymer particles and the capsules. And uh, it allows us to uh, precisely control the size, shape, composition, and the morphology of these uh, particles. And this uh, approach attracted uh, tremendous interest from industrial and also academic for different applications. So eventually, finally, I would like to uh, thank my uh, supervisor, Professor Eugenio Komacheva, and uh, uh, George White Sides for the continual support, and uh, thank the following uh, collaborations, uh, uh, Rubinstein work and Schick on the uh, nanorod work, and also uh, uh, Storm and Gastic and Binks and uh, the following people for the uh, microfluidic uh, research. I would like to thank the following uh, funding support, ANSOC for my postdoc work, uh, DARPA funding for my uh, another project called Soft Robotics, uh, but due to the confidentiality issue here, I cannot present these results. Otherwise, I'll be kicked out from U.S. And also, uh, I'd like to thank for uh, Bill Gates Foundation for my uh, research on medical diagnostics. Thank you for all your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. I'm glad to. John? In uh, a very interesting talk and a wonderful uh, broad range of applications. Thank you. Um, in, in the shells that you produce multiple cores, uh -huh. is there any crosstalk uh, among or between the contents of each 
stable? Actually, they are very stable. We add a surfactant in, uh, for example, for in oil phase in each phase, so they are very stable. You can keep for quite a long time. Yeah, and actually, I didn't present. And in another research, we also can in introduce different kinds of materials, different kinds of core. For example, you have like three cores A, B, C. You have three different kinds of materials. Actually, you can have many interesting application. Uh, there are different systems, yeah, there are different systems. For example, for the self-assembly, so you in the, say for the, oh, I can show you the image. Oh, this uh, phase diagram takes lots of time, so you need a large amount of data, for example, in the Experimental data, so you have like so many uh, data points, and in each uh, con uh, experiment condition, you obtain the uh, different structures, and you, and here this uh, dashed line actually is uh, superimposed uh, dashed line, so that there is no uh, very clear boundary in between. They may have like a transition region. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a theory from the uh, So far, we can explain it, but we don't have uh, a systematic. Uh, theory on, on that. But for, for example, for the self-assembly of nanochains, currently we are developing a uh, step growth polymerization theory on that. Yeah. But for others, we, we st uh, still we didn't look at it. And the same for the uh, microfluidic research, the large amount of data in one phase diagram. That's why I kind of hate phase diagram. It takes lots of time. <laughs> yeah. First, thanks for this uh, awesome talk and the uh, incredible research. Uh, very exciting. I, I wanted to ask about, uh, I mean, to follow on the, on the question, uh, are, um, are these systems dynamic? That means that if you change the water contents, mm -hmm. you switch to one area to the other one, if mm -hmm. you change after you go back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we think it is a reversible system. Actually, uh, here I didn't present. Uh, we monitored the uh, transition of the structure from one state to another by monitoring the optical properties of the uh, self-assembled structures. Uh, for example, in one system, we, for example, you have like a self-assembled nanochain and you add THF. The self-assembled structure slowly goes back to boundary structures. So I think they are reversible. Is there a way to stabilize, like example? You can use, uh, it's similar to uh, a self-assembly of block of polymer done by uh, at Eisenberg. So we can add a large amount of uh, water to uh, like freeze the structures. So when the uh, polymer phase underwent a uh, uh, glass transition uh, uh, state, so you will freeze the structure. Uh -huh. Have you noticed any uh, unusual characteristics of those cells in that confined environment? Uh, Frank know? speaking, we didn't look at it very carefully. We uh, encapsulate cells and uh, look at the liability of these cells. That's the only study we look at. Yeah. So but we're creating an environment where yeah. uh, the cell receptors were, uh -huh. were interacted with the inside of the core. You yeah. Know, Yeah, definitely. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So there are lots of things we can continue. Yeah. In the uh, the self assembly of the the gold nanorods, uh, uh, in the various various shapes depending uh -huh. on uh, on uh, concentration, etc. Uh, you use mainly polystyrene. Is there, mm -hmm. is there any limit to the cap, the, the capping uh, yeah. organic function that you can use it? Uh, we also use other polymers, for example, a polymer nipon, external responsive polymers. So we can kind of, you control the temperature and you can get a, re, a reversible self-assembly. 
So, and also we are working on a conductive polymer, for example, um, polysiphon, and, uh, and also other poly uh, carbazo. And uh, by self-assembly these uh, structures, we also can, would like to look at some electronic properties, for example, electro, electro transportation, electron transportation across these uh, nano uh, wire structures. Yeah. So is there any variation in the, in the, the um, shape of, the, of the, the particles that result from, is it, you know, from, you have to show chains and you mm -hmm. show spheres, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, if, you, if you use a different capping polymer. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're totally different. They're totally different. Totally different. Because it's, it's uh, similar to, uh, for example, triplocal polymers. If you uh, have like hydrophobic center but have two hydrophilic center, you will get like much richer uh, self-assembled right. structures. Right. Yeah, and here we actually we uh, we took a shortcut, so we directly take a hydrophilic nanorods and tease a hydrophobic uh, polymer onto both ends. But if we make it the other way around, we can make it more interesting in structure, I believe. Anyone else? Have a if not, I'll ask you. Oh, go ahead, John. Are there any pressure? Is there any pressure response to the multi-core shells? Uh, in other words, uh, external pressure controlling the uh, combination of, of, of cores, mm -hmm. or the combination or opening up of the cores to say allow a reaction to occur by controlling. Uh, yeah, we didn't look at it, but definitely. If you like, uh, for example, you control the external field or pressure, you can trigger the reaction, and somehow you can make a self-healing materials or some other materials. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. No other questions, and I'll ask you to join me once again in thanking Dr. Ni for a fascinating lecture. Thank you very much.